What's up techies, welcome back to my ROM video series and for this video I'm featuring Pure Nexus by Beanstown. Beanstown is a very well known developer in the Android community. Pure Nexus ROM has been my daily driver ROM for the last week or so, so I've had plenty of experience with it and I just want to kind of show you some of the features and how it's been treating me. I've used some of Beanstown ROMs and modifications in the past so I was really looking forward to trying this out and it's been a good ROM, it's a solid ROM to check out so let's go ahead and talk about it. Pure Nexus project can be found over in XDA forums and I'll leave a link down below where you can find that at. And again, I've used Beanstown stuff like for so many phones and so many devices. For this particular ROM, there's a bunch of different features that you can do. One of the cool things I like about this ROM, or what I've appreciated about it, is that it feels like a stock Android, but it adds a lot of the stuff that I personally like in the features kind of department. Again, I'll leave a link where you can find this ROM and it's a huge list of features, so I'm not gonna read them all off, that would just, be kind of boring, but you can definitely check out some of the newer stuff and I'll go through what's kind of unique about this ROM in just a minute in the settings. But he lists out all the stuff that is included in this ROM. So you definitely want to check that out. Before I get into all the features, I just want to say that I'm comparing this to stock Android and not against any other ROMs. This ROM includes a few features that I really appreciate that. And one of them is when you hold down the power button, you get a bunch of options. With stock Android, you only get power off. So with your reboot, you can either reboot, soft reboot, recovery, or bootloader. Using the reboot recovery option is my favorite way to get into my custom recovery. It is also one of the easier ways to take a screenshot, especially if you need to take a screenshot one-handed. You don't have to try to press two buttons at one time to take a screenshot. All you have to do is hold down the power button and press screenshot. That's actually one of my favorite features because it's so convenient that way. The other thing I like is pulling down on the right-hand side, it brings down everything versus stock Android, when you pull it down, it's gonna look like that, then you're gonna pull it down again. To me, that's, I, I just don't like that in stock Android. I like to be able to just pull it all the way down and see everything. But if you just wanna pull down the notification shade, all you have to do is pull it down from the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and go into the settings and kind of list off some of the different things about this ROM. You go into the settings and you're gonna see ROM control. Beanstown puts the Super SU app within the ROM control. Some developers, they put it at the bottom somewhere. But in this particular case, you're gonna see up here towards the top. All right, so going into Pure Nexus settings, you're gonna be greeted with this here. And actually what he does, he actually adds an app to the app drawer so you can actually access it from your launcher. But here is what it looks like. You got Pure Nexus, you got some useful links. You can follow him on some of the social networks. You can donate to the developer, lead developer, contributors, and so forth. But when you want to get into the features, you hit about, then you got your options here. So lock screen. And I'm just going to briefly go over some of these and kind of give you some of the ones that stand out to me the most. I really like the double tap to sleep anywhere. The media cover art is cool. So with that double tap, I just really like being able to wake up my phone that way. And putting it to sleep, you can do the same. It's one of those features that I think LG introduced and it's just very useful to me. I love it. And when these developers include this into the ROMs, it makes it that much more of a special experience to me. All right, so to our notification drawer, that quick pull down that I was telling you about, you can actually move it to the left-hand side or turn it off if you want to. You can show weather. Sometimes I add that and sometimes I don't. I guess it just kind of depends on my mood, but basically it's gonna show you the weather up here in the right-hand corner. It shows you a quick, just if you're interested in the weather in your notification area. You can force expand notifications and what that means is basically whenever you pull it down, you know, sometimes when you get a notification, like an email or even a text message, you'll only get the message, then you have to pull down again to get like a reply option. With force expand notifications, it'll actually expand automatically. You don't have to do any extra actions. You get some quick setting panel options here and you can kind of move around. You can add some more stuff. You can add anything on this list here. And this is my typical setup. This is what I normally have for those options, for those tiles. You can show four tiles per row. And as you can see here, there's only three, so you can kind of condense it more. That's kind of nifty. And you can do a brightness slider. I do like having that brightness slider because in different environments, I need to make it brighter or I need to make it pretty much dark. I know when I was watching Star Wars, I had this thing all the way down and it was just so nice to be, you can actually see the whole screen in that dark environment and it doesn't disturb the neighbors. So I like that feature a lot. All right, next, let's take a look at recent apps. And this is another favorite thing that I really like. These are some nice options, but the one that I look for the most is the clear all button. And basically what that does, you just come down here to recent apps and you see this button here, whoosh, all the way. And you can clear out your apps. The status bar is another area that I spend a lot of time on. 
I like my battery to be the circle with the battery percentage on the inside, so that's what I choose. I choose a circle, but you do get some other options. I just like that circle one a lot. You can choose to either hide the battery percentage inside the icon or next to it. I like it inside because it consolidates it. It doesn't add any more space to the notification or status bar. The battery bar location, you can hide it and so forth. And you got some different options down here as well. But this is what I typically set mine up as. All right, so the navigation bar, that's gonna be down here at the bottom. And you can show different ones. And you can double tap to sleep that area too. And that's pretty cool. You can do the kill app button. I actually normally have that activated. So go ahead and do that and recent long press so you can long press the recents to go back to the last open app that's a nice one to have activated as well you can actually choose the button layout so all you have to do is hit edit you can move these around you just long press it and shuffle it around where you want it this is where i like it and then you can actually add some apps so you can add power options you can do an empty button a search button a bunch of different options there really cool stuff if you mess up you can hit restore to defaults so that's a pretty cool option there. I really like that kind of stuff. You got some volume rocker options and this is pretty much the only option that I use which is here at the top. Moving on to our display options. This is where you can change the density, the DPI. I normally leave it on default. I don't normally mess with this kind of stuff but you can also change your LED controls down here at the bottom. This is another option I really like to have is to be able to disable the shutter sound for the camera. If your battery's running low, you normally get a pop-up and you can disable that if you like. We also have C-Clock options that you can do from that app and you can just change around to your different options, make your bold minutes and so forth. And this is how my setup normally looks like. I like the bold hour to thin minutes and then you got your weather. You can actually get some notifications like some calendar events and so forth. So pretty neat little app there. And last but not least, you got tools and info here at the bottom. And you can change your different stats and so forth, Wi-Fi information, build prop editor, phone info. So that pretty much does it for as far as what the features are involved with this. Now as far as performance goes, I'll go into my battery life real quick and just show you what I have so far today. And this is how my battery life has been treating me today. I've been on the phone pretty heavy throughout the day today. So I'd say it's pretty decent. Here's my screen on time so you can see that. For the most part, I haven't noticed any kind of difference between this and stock. It really just depends on how I use the phone each and every day. I don't like to necessarily get into battery life talk because there's so many variables involved, but Doze works really good. I get through the whole entire day and that's from unplugging the phone at seven o'clock and you know, on an, on an average use kind of day, I mean, I'm gonna get through at least dinner time, if not more. You know, sometimes when I'm going to bed at night, like 10, 11 o'clock at night, it's still around like 30%. And that's with heavy usage. I mean, from above normal or above average usage. So battery life is good on this ROM. It's treated me well. I've got no complaints about that at all. Performance wise, this thing really works really well. I've not seen any hiccups. There's not been any kind of force closes, things like that. The only thing that I've noticed about this ROM and I've tried to diagnose any kind of settings is the double tap the power button to launch the camera. It doesn't seem to work for me for some reason. You can see what it does. It goes to my pin. And I don't really understand why it does that. Other than that, that's been the only like bug that I've seen. Any other ROM that I've used, other than the double tap the power button to launch the camera option, this ROM has been great. It's definitely worth checking out. I'm sure that this will be fixed in a near future update. And that's the other cool thing about Beanstown is that he updates things on a regular basis. You're never gonna miss out on stuff. So that's been my experience with the Pure Nexus ROM. It's a ROM packed full of features and that's what I like. I'm a features kind of guy. Personally, I don't like stock Android. Stock Android just needs a lot of stuff. Just simple stuff like being able to reboot the phone from the power menu option. But with this ROM, it adds some stuff I really like, you know, like the reboot option, the double tap the screen, just simple stuff like that that just makes the experience that much better for me. Thanks for watching this ROM series video. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if there's a ROM that you would like me to go over. Make sure you hit that share button and until then, stay techy.